Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Voice of Faith, and welcome to Healing is Now. Having your Bibles, let's open them, please, to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, and verse 24. Good place to go for a healing service. Now, for those of you that don't know, I'm not afraid of amens and hallelujahs. That kind of gets me revved up and going. I am given to fits of Holy Ghost, <laughs> given to Holy Ghost fits, I guess I should say, and run around. I forgot my handkerchief at home, my hanky, so I got to use a paper one off, but I'll still shout and <laughs> do this, hallelujah. hallelujah. Reminds me growing up in church, the old Pentecostal ladies who had the hair up in a bun and long sleeves and long dresses, they'd all get out their handkerchief and would give a wave offering to the Lord. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Precious times. Thankful for that. All right, 1 Peter chapter 2. I need to get there myself. Here we are in verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. One more time. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to begin tonight just as a foundation, a main point that we gave last time, and use that as a foundation for what God has for us tonight. Christians pray for healing. And if you listen to them closely, the majority of them, they talk and they act like they're waiting on God to make a decision about their healing. Have you ever noticed that? What do you, we're just waiting on God. Waiting on what? Well, waiting to see if He's going to heal us. Waiting on Him to make a decision. That's not right. God is not slothful. What I mean by that. God is not slothful. What I mean by that is this, that God has made every decision He's ever needed to make. And He's already made a decision concerning your healing. That's good news. We don't have to talk him into making a decision about healing us. He's already made that decision. Amen. Hallelujah. People are in the valley of decision, not God. Hello? People are in the valley of decision. The Bible says multitudes, multitudes are in the valley of decision. God's not in the valley. Here's what he's doing. He's up here looking at all those that are in the valley. And once they make a decision, he brings them up to where he's at. Right? God has already made a decision about your healing. Well, Phil, you sure are awful positive about that. How do you know? Because His provision reveals His decision. His provision reveals His decision. If God didn't want to heal you, He wouldn't have made a provision for it. Right? So, obviously, the provision He's made reveals that He made a decision about your healing a long, long time ago. Before you ever got here, He already made a decision to heal you every single time. Everything that will ever be wrong with you, he's already got healing for you. Amen. I want to cut and run right now, but I better wait. Hallelujah. His provision reveals his decision. You are not waiting on God, and neither am I. Right? It's just as much God, as God's will to heal you as it is to save you. Yeah. It's just as much his will to, to heal you as it is to save you. How do you know that? Because of the provision. Amen. How many of you know that he could have made a beeline for Calvary and skipped the whole whipping post? Amen. He went to the whipping post first. Why? By his stripes ye were healed. He provided healing before he provided the, the saving of your spirit. Amen. Don't tell me healing secondary when he did that first. Say it with me. Say, His provision, his provision. Reveals, his decision. reveals His decision. What is healing? Let me give you a definition that I think is really good and sound and solid and will give you something to carry you along for a long period of time. Healing is the life of God manifest. Amen. Healing is the life of God manifest. 
Whatever's wrong, so let's say that my sister here, she, she's got something wrong with her arm. Well, if her arm's healed, the life of God is manifest in that arm. Right? Now, the flip side of that is this, that sickness is a dose of death. That's why the devil puts sickness on us. He wants to give us a little bit of death. And if we don't do anything about it, then the more doses of death we get, pretty soon we're out of here. Amen. Every cold, every headache, the devil's out to kill you. Amen. Oh, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. He hates you. Hallelujah. He hates you. He is out to, to destroy you. Yes, you know that there's been more than one person who got sick, then got the flu, then got pneumonia, then got dead. Right? And getting dead is not good. I know that's not good English, but you got the point. <laughs> Healing is the life of God manifest. Amen. If you get enough life, then you live in divine health and you don't get sick. And so when the devil tries to shoot a fiery dart of sickness or disease, bing, 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 it bounces off because there's too much life in you. It can't find a foothold. It can't attach itself. You like that definition of healing? Yes. Healing is the life of God manifest. I've never met a Christian yet afraid of the life of God. If so, you've got serious problems. You probably need to get saved. <laughs> All right, go with me, please, to... Uh, well, before we do that, let's look at this verse again. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. On December the 22nd of 2018, I was reading this verse, and the Holy Spirit spoke this to me. He said this, He, <clears throat> excuse me, He, meaning Jesus, He finished your healing, now you finish your receiving. He finished your healing, now you finish your receiving. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so where does that put the responsibility? Amen. On us. Amen. Right? Because he's done his part. He finished your healing. By whose stripes ye were healed. He did his part. Now we need to finish our receiving. Amen. That's not to put pressure on you. That should be good news because you don't need to pressure him to heal you. A lot of wasted prayer, a lot of wasted, oh, God, heal me. Oh, God, if you just heal me, I promise I'll go to Sunday school. God, if you heal me, I promise I'll pay my tithes. I promise, I promise. I pro it's, this is not a let's make a deal. <laughs> this is not, a, I mean, he, he's finished it. Now we need to finish our receiving. Amen. There's no need to put pressure on him. You can't put pressure on him for what, something he's already done. That'd be like me saying... Oh, Sister Karen, please, please come here. Please, please come here. Oh, please. She's here. Phil, chill out. Relax. She's here. <laughs> right? Amen. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah. So he finished your healing. Now you finish your receiving. Let's go, please, to the book of Mark, chapter 7. Mark 7, verse 24. Growing up Pentecostal, and I'm thankful that I did. I'm not Pentecostal now. I'm just a Christian with a Pentecostal experience. Right? right? We got right. stuff that come along in the Pentecostal movement that was junk. Yeah. I'm free from the junk, but I still speak in tongues and believe in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I still believe in the Spirit itself, bearing witness with our spirit. Hallelujah. I don't forget where I was going with that. Anyway, Mark chapter 7. What was I going to say? I guess it's not important. Mark 7, verse 24. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So in the Pentecostal church, <laughs> I thought prayer was nothing more than just putting pressure on God. If I could some way, somehow touch him with my need, he would feel sorry enough to do something for me. I told you what my, my granddaughter, she, he's, she's like four and a half. She prayed about a month ago, and we were sitting around the dinner table, and Serenity, would you pray? She goes, okay. So she goes, Lord, we want you to know. <laughs> and that's the way a lot of people pray. Lord, we want you to know how bad it is. Because if you know how bad it is, then surely you're going to do something about it. 
Prayer is not a newscast to let God know what's going on. Right? Mark 7, verse 24. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. <clears throat> you sure you want to get famous? <laughs> <clears throat> For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table... Eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Healing and deliverance are the children's bread. Amen. Healing and deliverance are the children's bread. I want to bring out four points about this area. <clears throat> Healing and deliverance are the children's bread. I'm going to give you four points here. Point number one is, healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. Can you say that? <clears throat> okay. That gave me a chance to get a drink of water. Thank you. Healing is the children's bread. I want you to notice what Jesus did not say. Jesus did not say healing is the children's dessert. Bread is a staple. It's not an extra. It's not an add-on. Bread is a staple. It's a basic. Healing is a staple item on the Lord's table. Healing is a staple item on the Lord's table. Aren't you glad he didn't say it's the children's dessert? Man, in my house, I like meat, I like potatoes, and I like bread. I'm a, I'm a carnivore by nature. I did not get to the top of the food chain to be a vegetarian. Okay? Me either. Me either, that's right. I'll meet you at Wendy's later on for a red meat burger, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Double that puppy and put some bacon on it. <laughs> now, don't do that. I'm just playing around, okay? <laughs> don't, let me, don't make me raise you from the dead. Christian and I went into Wendy's a few months ago, and he said, we're looking, he goes, I want the burger that comes with the defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> Healing is the children's bread. It's basic. It's a staple item. Healing is a staple item on the Lord's table. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Number two, healing is meant to be... <clears throat> healing is meant to be as easy as eating bread. Amen. Healing is meant to be as easy as eating bread. Our concepts of healing have got to change. The biblical concept of healing is that it's as easy as eating bread. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've got years of experience screaming at you, telling you, Phil, it's not that easy. Receiving healing isn't as easy as eating bread. Either Jesus is right or he's wrong. So what do we got to do? We got to pray, Lord, take our experience and lift it up to match the word as opposed to being tempted to take the word and water it down to meet our, match our experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. We can water it down and say, it really doesn't mean that. It, he meant it just for her, not for us. Or we can say, Lord, my experience is screaming out that healing is hard. But you said healing is easy as eating a piece of bread. Lord, bring my experience up to match what you said in your word. 
Our concepts, I'm still eating bread. Our concepts of healing have got to change. The reason why healing has been so hard is because we believe it's hard. And that's what's blocking the healing. Amen. Not just physical, mental, emotional, marital, all of our relationships. Being healed is just as easy as eating a piece of bread. So, let me ask you this question. What does healing look like to you? What does healing look like to you? Does it look like just as easy as eating a piece of bread? Or does it look different than that? What does healing look like to you? Oh, it's a long, drawn-out process. Man, you go through the mud and the blood and the flood. And you just barely make it. And we just don't know why. Oh, the Lord's talking. Amen. What does healing look like to you? Number three, healing is not a topical solution. Healing is not a topical solution. It is not a rubbing compound. It is not a Holy Ghost being gay. Man, what's that, what's that smell? Smells like a nursing home convention. No, that's just the Holy Ghost moving. That's just His anointing. I'm being a little funny, but I'm serious because I want you to think that most, I want you to understand most people think that healing. <coughs> I've never ate and breathed at the same time. <coughs> Not much more to go. All right, most people think that healing is topical, it comes on you, it comes on top of you, and it's just some kind of compound that rubs in. <laughs> In order for bread to do you any good, it must get on the inside. If I take this bread and rub it on my arm, I'm going to stay hungry. If I'm hungry for a carrot and I get a carrot and rub it on my arm, all I'm going to get is an orange arm. <clears throat> it's got to get on the inside. The nutrients in this bread will not work for me until it gets on the inside. Healing is not topical. Understanding does not equal possession. Understanding does not equal possession. I can know about all the nutrients and all the compounds and all the contents of this bread and go, yeah, yeah, that's right. But until I get it on the inside of me, my understanding does not equal possession. And you can know that it's God's will to heal you and still be sick. Christians do it all the time. Say ouch. ouch. Say oh me. Oh, me. Say amen. amen. Thank you. <laughs> Christians do it all the time. Yep, by his stripes I'm healed. But we go month after month sick because understanding does not equal possession. You must take it in. You've got to get it on the inside of you. You use your mouth to eat bread. You use your mouth to be healed. Right? <clears throat> That's new for some of you. You use your mouth to eat bread to get it on the inside. You use your mouth to be healed, to get that healing on the inside of you. Now, here's, here's why people think that healing is topical. So I'm going to pray for this lady. And healing power is going to leave the palms of my hands when my hands are on her head. So that healing power is going to go on her but it won't do her any good until it gets on the inside of her. Amen. And unless you're taught, you're just going to think, well, it's just the Holy Ghost being gay. I had a lady in my church. She was very sick and was sick for a long time. She'd come up for prayer and I'd pray for her for, her for healing. And it never got on the inside of her. It just went off her. And one day I was praying for her and the Lord showed me the healing power was flowing through me, and it was going on her, but it was flowing off of her like water off a duck's back. Not one ounce was getting on the inside of her. How many of you remember Biscuit Head? Uh, Steve Neal, our, our evangelist Steve Neal, when he came? Well, I had him at my church, and he came and held a revival for me. And that lady came up every service. He laid hands on her and prayed for her. She never got healed. Our last service, him, him and I went to my office, and he said, you know Sister So-and-So? I said, yeah. 
He said, you know, when I pray for her, healing goes out of my hands. I go, yeah. He said, but it leaves her like water off a duck's, duck's back. And I went, that's exactly what the Lord told me and showed me. She never did get healed. Why? Because she didn't know to receive it and get it on the inside. She thought if she got enough of it on the outside, she'd be all right. And she's sick to this day. She's been sick for decades now. Sad, isn't it? Look at Proverbs chapter 4, please. <clears throat> Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4 and 20. <clears throat> I will never eat and preach again at the same time. Proverbs 4.20 My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Healing power when it's administered, it's going to come on, but that's not enough. It's got to get on the inside. Now listen, listen to this carefully. Healing power has got to get in your heart so it can be an issue flowing out. Healing power has got to get in your heart so it can be an issue flowing out. Now all that can happen in a matter of three, four seconds. Right? When you're under the healing anointing and you lay hands on, that healing anointing will go on her, but if she knows and has faith, it'll go in her heart and come back out as an issue. And as it's flowing out of her spirit, it's going to pass through her soul and into her body and she will be healed. Like I said, it only take two or three seconds for that loop to happen. But it's got to get in your heart for it to be an issue flowing out. If it's only on your body, it'll never be an issue flowing out of you. And that's why people are temporarily helped and they wind up getting sick or worse is the healing power never got in their heart to flow out. Amen. Am I helping anybody? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Number four. Number four. It is a child's right to eat bread. It is a child's right to eat bread. Am I going too fast? You all are locked in pretty good, but you're processing pretty fast, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord says this is not to be derogatory. This is not meant to bring anybody down. But the Lord says, compared to me, you're in the first grade concerning healing. You've been around it for years, you've heard it taught. But there's things about healing we still don't know. Amen. And we've got to stay open and be teachable because there's things we still don't know. Amen. 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 I receive that, Lord. I'm looking to shoot to the second grade, though. <laughs> I want to graduate to second grade. How about you? Amen. It is a child's right to eat bread. It is your right as God's child to be healed. It is your right as God's child to be healed. In your mind, tie your healing to Jesus, not your healing to your performance. Tie, yeah. In your mind, tie healing to Jesus. Do not tie healing to your performance. Why? Because it's your right as a child to be healed. I'm a father, I'm a grandfather. And even though, even though they acted up at times, and even though there, I, was times, I was upset with them, they still ate. They still had bread at the table. They still had potatoes and meat. They still had vegetables. Right? Amen. Don't tie your healing to your performance. Tie it to Jesus. You tie it to your performance, you may never get healed. <laughs> you tie it to Jesus, you can always be healed. Amen? Amen? Amen. So it's your right... To be healed. Listen carefully. Healing really is a righteousness issue. 
Healing is a righteousness issue. I think this is probably one of the biggest reasons why people struggle with healing, even when they know it's God's will, is because it's a righteousness issue and people are trying to get it on performance. Got to let that process, pausing for effect. <laughs> healing is a righteousness issue. Read with me, please, in the book of Malachi, chapter 4. Last book of the Old Testament. It's your right to be healed. Whether you've been a good Christian or a bad Christian, you have a right to be healed. Thank you. Righteousness and holiness are two different things. Righteousness comes before holiness. Malachi 4, verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. How do you spell son like father and son? How do you spell son like bright sunshine? But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Not its wings, his wings. Jesus is the S-U-N. He's the son of righteousness. Okay? The son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. What are the wings? How many of you have ever seen the picture of the sun with those fumes coming out? Those big plumes? All right, how many of you ever looked at a, you sat around a campfire and you watched the fire and there was that flicker? That's the flame, all right? Unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. That flame is the wings. There's healing in righteousness. Let me say it to you like this. When righteousness rises in your life, in the light of that righteousness, you're going to see that you have a right to be healed. Amen. You have a right to a peace of mind. You have a right to plenty of money. You have a right to good, a good life. As the sun of righteousness rises, the more light that shines, the more you're going to see, I have rights. Amen. I have privileges and rights, and I am in right standing with God. <clears throat> now, all of you that are married, been married, had a relationship etc., etc., and etc. It's amazing when you're married and you're in bed how much space can be between one person and another when there's no righteousness. <laughs> there's, there's miles between one edge of the bed and the other. I've had the Grand Canyon in my bed. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> but you can tell, or I can tell, when I'm in right standing with Leanne because at night she'll move her leg over and put her foot on top of mine. I'm, well, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I am in right standing with Leanne. Amen. You know, it may not be it for you. It may be an arm over you, whatever. You know, you can tell when you're right with your spouse. And you can tell when you're not. <laughs> but with God, he's not like our spouse. He's not one day up and one day down. It's, you're right. Amen. Because it's a gift. Amen. And since it's a gift, you didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. Therefore, you can't forfeit it. Amen. You can't forfeit it by bad doing because it's a gift. And in that right standing is healing. Children have a right to bread. You have a right to be healed. Hmm, hallelujah. Look at this. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth said this many years ago, and man, I agree with it. He said, there's something about righteousness that will make you grow up. And that's right. You want to grow up spiritually, you study on righteousness. It's, it's a major, major blessing. It'll cause you to grow. Just like this verse here, you'll grow up as calves of the stall. I love that. It's so picturesque. A calf... And you let him loose, 
you ought to see it. He starts kicking and dancing around because he's been shut up in that pen for so long. And now he's let loose and he's just dancing all over the place. And that's the way we are when the sun of righteousness shines on us and we get our healing in those wings. Man, we just start going forth and we're dancing around. I'm healed. I'm healed. All pain's gone. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Oh, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm righteous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a child's right to eat bread. Amen. You have a right to be healed. Amen? Amen. Let's go please to the book of Mark chapter 2. Mark 2, verse number 3. You know this story. Mark 2, 3. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press... They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why did this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Please notice what Jesus didn't say. I'm so glad he didn't say. Whether it's, which one is harder? He didn't say which one's harder. He said, Which one's easier? Which is the easiest one, to say your sins are forgiven or to say, get up and go home? Amen. To Jesus, both are easy. I don't care how serious your condition is. I don't care how long you've been in that condition. To Jesus, healing you is as easy as forgiving you. Oh, I never said it like that before. I got to get this tape or CD. I just told you how old I am. <laughs> But that ye may know the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. <laughs> we never saw it on this fashion. Now, Jesus said to the man, Thy sins be forgiven thee. He didn't say first, be healed. He dealt with the man's sins. Sin consciousness holds more people back than just about anything else. If you feel unworthy, it will be hard for you to have a piece of healing. It'll be real hard for you. If you feel unworthy, no good, why me, and all of that, you're not established in your righteousness yet. Jesus, I submit to you that Jesus could not, could not heal this man until he dealt with the, his sin awareness. The man's sitting there going, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And Jesus is over here dealing with the knuckleheads about how they're judging him. And he's over, over here going, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I am, now the imperial song. Now I have a reason for living. <laughs> I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And once that revelation came to him, I'm good. I'm good in the sight of the master. Jesus wheels around and says, get up and go home. Amen. Why do Christians struggle with healing? Because they don't know they're righteous. They have tied their healing to their performance. They haven't tied it to Jesus and to their righteousness. Amen? Amen. Being righteous... <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. I got to back up. Yeah. Whew. The devil will take God's word out of your heart by accusation. The devil will take God's word out of your heart by accusation. 
You're no good. You're unworthy. You're not fit. You know what you did. You know how you partied. You know how you got drunk. You know how you smoked weed. You know this. You know that. You know all that. He will steal the word out of your heart with, with accusation. Being righteous means you are no longer guilty. Being righteous means you're no longer guilty. You can't be both. You can't be righteous and guilty at the same time. So which one are you? Are you guilty? Then repent. Let the blood cleanse you. Either you're, you're guilty or you're righteous. Right? Oh, what a revelation. You mean I'm not guilty? That's right. You are not guilty. But Phil, I did it. Shh, don't shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Don't tell us what you did. But I did. Shut, shh, shh. What do I say? Plead the blood. Don't plead guilty. Don't plead innocent. Plead the blood and shut up. You plead the blood, the Lord says, that's my son, that's my daughter, and they're right with me. Boom, there's the healing. Praise God. Isaiah 33, please. We're just about to close. Boy, I get to be animated, don't I? My goodness. Isaiah 33. Better that than bringing in the sheaves, bringing, oh, we're so happy, bringing in, no. <laughs> I want to move around, glory to God. I'm Holy Ghost filled. <laughs> Look at this awesome verse I found. Isaiah 33. Verse 24. What an awesome verse of Scripture. Isaiah 33, 24. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. Why? The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. <laughs> Forgiveness, righteousness, and healing go together. The inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. There's coming a day we will never hear the words, I am sick. There's coming a day we'll never hear. I had a headache. I had a backache. My arthritis was acting up. That day is going to be over with. There's a, there's a connection to being forgiven and being healed. Now, this verse, there's a, ver there's a word here in this verse. Check this out. The inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. The word iniquity is the strongest word for sin. Not every sin is an iniquity, but iniquity is the strongest form of sin. Iniquity means a heart distortion. It means a heart that's bent toward evil. It's that besetting sin. It's that one thing that besets you that you fall into over and over and over again. That's your iniquity. And if your iniquity is forgiven, you're not going to say, I'm sick. Hallelujah. Let's go over to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2. I believe one more verse and then we'll be finished. <laughs> Psalm 103. Am I looking any, at any righteous people today? Amen. Amen. Forgiven, not guilty, no condemnation. You know what the word condemnation means? The word condemnation... It's like in a city when they take, when they take and they go to a house and they, they knock with a, a hammer and a nail and they, this building's condemned. It means two things. It means it's not fit to live in. It's not fit to be used. And the devil wants to put on you your sins, your guilt and say, you're not fit for God to live in and you're not fit to be used because you know what you did. What a liar. Come on, say it. Say, I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. Therefore, I'm healed. <laughs> the Lord said two things to me recently about healing. He said to me, in the fall of last year, he said, Son, your healing is important to me. Amen. 
Then about, about a month later, he said this to me. There is nothing standing in your way of healing. There's nothing standing in your way of healing. Why? I said, why, Lord? He said, because you're righteous. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth some of your iniquities. Sorry, sorry. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. He forgives all, He heals all, right? He finished your healing, now you finish your receiving. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. When you were forgiven, you were healed. Hmm. When you were forgiven, you were healed. But Phil, it doesn't look like it. Well, it doesn't always look like you're righteous either. You don't always feel saved. So what's feeling have to do with it? What's love? God? I got all these crazy songs. And I don't listen to that kind of music either. <laughs> what's love got to do with it? A secondhand emotion. Anyway, man, it's crazy that stuff gets in you. Years later, here it comes again. Okay, settle down, Phil. When you were forgiven, you were healed. Here's another one. Sickness must submit to righteousness. Amen. Sickness must submit to righteousness. This is a good, good thing here about righteousness. Sickness must submit to righteousness. One day I was praying, and I was, I was talking about, to the Lord about righteousness. And I heard myself say this. I release the force of righteousness into this situation. And I stopped, like, what did I just say? I release the force of righteousness into this situation. And the Lord said to me, son, when you do that, the force of righteousness goes into a person or into that situation, and my righteousness takes what's wrong and make it right. The force of righteousness takes what's wrong and makes it right. So sickness must submit to righteousness. Disease must submit to righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. When the power of sin was broken, the authority of sickness was broken. When the power of sin was broken, the authority of sickness was broken. If your sins are forgiven, healing is your right. Yes, one more time, sure. Hello, everybody. Let's oh, the whole thing. Okay. Rats, it's my chance to go all over again. When you were forgiven, you were healed. Sickness must submit to righteousness. When the power of sin was broken, the authority of sickness was broken. Is that the one you were looking for? When the power of sin was broken, the authority of sickness was broken. If your sins are forgiven, healing is your right. Hallelujah. So we close. Let's go please to Mark 11. Mark 11, talking about receiving healing tonight. He finished your healing, you finished your receiving. As we close, let me ask you, did this help you tonight? Did you learn anything? Good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 11, verse 22. Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Here's what I want you to notice. He shall have whatsoever he saith. We're into the having part. It's not enough just to know about it. I want to have it. I want to live it. I want to experience it. Amen? So he said that you shall have whatsoever you say if you believe that what you say is going to come to pass. Right? Okay, look at verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. 
So the have them is in verse 23. The have them is in verse 24. So Jesus tells us how to have them. Here's how we receive healing. Oh, all the antennas went up right then. I just saw it. Hallelujah. Here's how we receive our healing. Number one, we know it's our bread. We have a right to it. Okay? We know that we're in right standing with God. And here's how we receive it. <laughs> you have to use your mouth to eat bread. You have to use your mouth to receive or feed on healing. You have to believe that you receive. You have to believe you have it now. Because healing is now. Amen. Right? Yes. So here, here I say it like this. You may want to write this down. Get in faith. Stay in faith. Get in faith and then stay in faith. No matter how long it takes for the symptoms to change, you stay in faith. Amen. Get in faith, stay in faith. Feed on the word. It is healing to you. Not just the healing verses. There's healing in the begats. There's healing in the wherefores and the therefores. There's healing in the names. His healing power is all through the word. So you deliberately decide, I'm going to believe this. I'm going to read this. And as I read this out loud, I'm going to feed healing into me. I'm feeding it into my spirit, not my body. I'm feeding it into my spirit. It's going to come out of my heart as an issue and it's going to affect my body. I have never in my life been attacked by fear like last year. I have never been attacked with fear like last year in August when the devil attacked my heart. I had to deal with the fear first because I was afraid I was going to die. Now, I'm not afraid of going to heaven. I'm afraid of dying because it's not God's will for me to leave. It's in my heart to run my race and finish my course and do what God's called me to do i got a wife I love. i got children and grandchildren I love. i got a church I love. And the devil hit me with fear. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm not a fearful person. But it was a spirit. It wasn't just a feeling. It was a spirit. And it took me a while to get over that. I don't know why I shared that. But I'll tell you how I got rid of it. I rebuked it, and I talked about my righteousness. Amen. I talked about who I am in Christ. Amen. And it was during that time the Lord said to me, Son, your healing's important to me. Amen. And then I started going, going around saying, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Because perfect love washes out, flushes out all that fear. Amen. So I got a fresh revelation of how much He loves me. I have no more fear. I don't know what to say. I'm just happy right now. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a victory in this word. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the blood. And there's victory in praying in tongues. There's victory in praising God when it looks like it's all gone to hell. You just praise Him and praise Him and praise Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to the voice of faith and being a part. We appreciate it very much.